and up. First of all, I'm going to prefix this with a little um, advisory, just of um, graphic guidance and things like that, just because of some of the subject matter I am going to be covering. It is going to be um, on abuse and other things. So if you're not prepared to go through some of the... It's not going to be visual, it's more just going to be talked about. But if this is going to stir up some raw things with you, I advise that you do not watch from here on in. Okay? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever the fluff you are. I hope your day is going belting. Sorry if my eyes keep going away, I've just got a bit of sport on the other telly. Uh, so, this is going to go on to abuse of partner or spouse, or abuse from partner, spouse, and or family member. Now, this one might be a little bit difficult for me to go through and it might be a little bit jumpy and patchy and things just because there's a few things that are still a little bit raw but I want to get this out there okay so I was in a relationship a while ago for a while I had a partner who did for some obvious and you know reasons have you know did go through abuse and had had some trauma but it doesn't it doesn't give an excuse to what they did in the future so it starts off with a few little things so yes they did originally have a form of night terrors which were valid for, from some of the things that they've gone through this was worked through and had gone then over time, some of these things start coming back, but it's not the same way. It's totally different, because with the night terrors, they were asleep. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to mention the name or their gender. They're just going to be they or them or whatever. Okay? Just because I am not going to drop anybody into it, but some people out there may be able to work out who this is just because you know but so because they were at the time when they had their original night terrors were asleep and were doing things totally different to how it ended up when it became down the lines of more of the abuse side to abusing me okay so a lot of it was yes they were asleep originally and they were like moving around and they were kind of like you know kicking about and moving and jiggling about and quite uncomfortable that was normal that went through the normal set from when we went to see the doctor about it and how to start the help for that further down the line it became totally different because they were not asleep they were totally wide awake and totally in control of the situation that they were doing so it starts off with you know the odd little you know the odd little bump of the knee and the back, things like that, and the odd arm across and the odd shifting of the pillows and you know an odd plush getting shoved across and popped over onto your side of the bed. Yeah, that's fine. You know, that was kind of accepted because it was we were both sort of active sleepers and we would both roll around and toss and turn. So that was normal with that, but when we changed the bed, that went because we then had a bed which was more stable and could support us both and would hold us more in place, you know. So went through all of that and everything else and then a little bit further down the line it starts to become more obvious that this is abuse because it then went from just the odd knee, it was a perfectly positioned knee to get you in the groin a perfectly positioned knee to get you in the small of the back or to go for the kidneys anywhere which would cause pain but could be hidden it was then the arm across to then whip and slap across and hit 
it then became more of a punch in the shoulder and a grab of the arm to then twist it into an unnatural position. It was then more of the scratching and the biting in places that could easily be hidden. So this was, you know, talked about. It was, oh yeah, it just seems more like I'm just having a bit of a bad moment. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm working this out in my mind going, yeah, what the fuck is going on here? These should have been gone long ago. Why are these coming up? Then I will start working it out. That, oh, maybe, was it because I came home late from work? Was it because that train broke down and I got back? from a meeting late or I got back from seeing a friend late was it because I disagreed whilst we were out on a walk or we were out somewhere was it because I didn't do something quick enough that they never mentioned was it because I spent a little bit of extra time on a game a day day or two prior <coughs> <coughs> Things like that. And then, after one day, I had been peeing it down most of the week, and I've only got the set of work clothes that I am wearing that day. So the day before, I asked, tomorrow, could you put whatever is in the wash and just switch the washing machine on and then get it out of the wash and put it in the dryer or at least just do switch the washer off and get it washed so that at least I've got some clean stuff for you know the rest of the week the rest of the time that I've got to be in work because it's been raining all the time I'm running out of clothes so I was like yeah yeah yeah, yeah no problem no problem yeah I'll do that okay so usually when I get up they'll wake up and I'll go out and then they'll probably have a nap and then do whatever. This time, no. They weren't. They didn't even wake up. So they don't even wake up. So I'm at work and then I get a message from them. Oh, I've only just woke up. This is like, you know, dinner time. It's just like, yeah, okay, no problem. All right. You know, think nothing of it because I'm a bit busy. So I finish the day and I get back late because, yeah, we've had to sort a few things out because it's been busy closer to the end and we've had to have a quick talk about a new procedure which is coming in in the next couple of weeks for something because we're running into that time of year where we do need to start thinking a little bit more on other things so that's fine so i get home late <clears throat> so i just go okay right fine so do that i go get changed out of all of the soggy wet stuff because it was absolutely lashing it down I go to see what has gone on in the kitchen. The washer door is still wide open with all of the stuff that hasn't even been washed. Just okay, you must have forgot. I'll switch it on. So then, because I switch it on, boom! Starts absolutely howling at me for no reason. Just because I've done that. Oh, but I've got a headache. I don't want any noise. Well, I've been at work all day and you could have at least switched this on just for one bit and then you could have gone back to bed. You know? The washing machine doesn't make that much noise. It doesn't thump around and run around like the old one used to do. You know? But never mind. Did that. So it was like, I'm getting shouted at and screamed at. And it's like, all comes to my head. They got annoyed because they got peed off because one, I asked them to do the washing. And two, that there wasn't something in the fridge that they never asked about for weeks. So, you know. So they hadn't even fed themselves. Not my problem if they haven't fed themselves. You're an adult. You're supposed to be able to feed yourself, but that's besides the point. So then that night, after I've done all the cooking, the cleaning and everything else, so that night, I then get absolute hell. I get kneed in the nether regions. I get punched in the shoulders and across the back. I then end up getting pushed over and nearly asphyxiated with a pillow just because I'd dared to ask could you do the washing today bearing in mind this is someone that doesn't do anything at all doesn't never work didn't go out to work 
didn't really do much. Just went out and went to see their friends. Had everything that they asked for. Whenever they asked for something, they were given it. They wanted a new phone, it was bought. You know? But at this point, I've had, I would just... Whatever, I just want to friggin' sleep because I want to get through the rest of this hell week. Because this week is killing me off. You know? We're short-staffed at work because one of the managers is sick and the other one was on holiday. So there's only literally a skeleton crew at work. So we can't really do a lot. So we're all running around doing three people, four people's work. And there's only three or four of us doing that work. You know, so it all died down and I thought it was all fine, you know, and then it was the, these are the words that still echo in my mind. You've brought this upon yourself. This is all your fault. This is all you're doing. You've done this to yourself. Nobody will believe what you will say because they will believe what I tell them. Nobody will believe you because everybody will believe me. I could kill you right now and I will get away with it because no one would believe that I've done it. Because I know how to do it and make it look like you did it to yourself. Followed by a USB cable being wrapped around my throat twice and then pulled tight until I managed to push them off. Which was then followed by, get the f out of my bed and f off. So needless to say, I got no sleep that night. Because I was sat in the living room. Whilst they're in the other room. Crying. Because they've now just realised what the fuck they've just done. They'd gone too far. They'd overcrossed their own little boundary because they had set their own boundary of how to hide it and make it seem like they are not doing this for control and power. So a few days go by because I waited to assess all of this on some time where I had some time off. Have a conversation. They do, don't think anything of it. They just use night terrors as the complaint. So it's okay, whatever. So from here on in, I'm just like, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. So I'm going to find any way out. So I've already said six or seven times during the following few days. You do realise, right, this relationship is over. Whilst I'm then looking for somewhere else to go live. You know, I've asked family members, is it alright if I bunk with you for a few days whilst I just sort my head out because something's happened? You know, kept it all secret between all the family members that I told, kept everything secret. You know, and then from there on in on their side of it, all of the friends appeared, started throwing up accusations of. Oh, well, you've been cheating, you've been doing this, you've been doing that, you've done this, you're, you're, you're abusive, you're doing this, everything, you know. So it's just like, yeah, 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 whatever. All the meantime, that whilst those friends are then saying that, they're then dropping that person in it. Because that person has then been going off and doing other stuff. So two or three weeks later, whilst I'm at work, I get a little phone call from someone that I know. You do realise that your partner has now just been seen by with someone else kissing. They've been seen doing this and they've been seen doing that. And it's like, yeah, I totally expect this. I totally expect it because the, this is the stuff that's been thrown my way, been thrown at me, all the accusations that have been thrown at me. So this is their way of destroying everything before they're out, even though I've already ended it and I've already said this is totally over. You know? But hey. You know? <clears throat> you know, I'm looking for other places to go. It's like, do I really want to go 
somewhere where I have to then travel miles or travel quite a long way to get to work. In the end I end up doing because after the relationship is totally over where I was is then no, no use so I move out. I'm now miles away from where that was but that's besides the point. Their little attitude and hissy fits about everything, about where they're going for this and how they're going to be doing this and everything is, you know, they just set out from the point of where I just went, you know, it's totally over. But whilst they're still maintaining that we are in a relationship, they're doing everything then, or their friends are doing everything then, to find a way to destroy me, to destroy everything else. You know, telling other people that I've done this and that I've done that and that I'm the bad person and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I had to go through all of that. But the people that were being told that and then coming to me were going, really? Really? And it's like, yeah, there's me with a black eye after being smashed in the face because they'd had enough of hiding it that night. So I still had a little bit of bruising under the eye. Kind of defeats the point when there's a little bit of evidence still in play, doesn't it? But never mind, you know. Where they are now, from what I've seen, they've still not moved on from where they were being that selfish, self-destructive, narcissistic person. Now, there was plenty of times during the lead up to where I said, I'm out of this. I could have walked. And really I should have walked a lot earlier, but I didn't because... I was a little bit more concerned about how the frick am I going to get to work at certain times? How the frick am I going to get all of this shit out of here? You know? Where am I going to start, store it all? Where am I going to put it all? How how am I going to be able to do all of this whilst I'm getting these little bits and pieces done? You know? But I didn't... I paid the price in the end by being abused, but I'm now in a, better, a way better place. But... For those of you who are watching this along and have dealt with some of this or are going through some of this, don't leave it as late as I did. Don't ever go through it. Just get out of here. Just get out of it. You know? Just walk away. If it means going to a family member and staying with them, if it means leaving majority of your stuff behind, you know, if it means taking a sick day off work whilst your partner is away, you know, visiting friends or whatever, you know, and then you literally just packing a couple of bags and then disappearing. You know, if, even if it means that you pack their bags and leave them with a friend, so that you don't have to bother with seeing them again. Do that. If it means that you need to go and talk to someone about it, you go do it. Go talk to someone about the abuse that you're going through or that you feel that you're going through. Go talk to someone about it. Don't leave it like I left it. Don't leave yourself so long. You know, don't go through it. Just don't. It's not worth it. Yes. I am in a better place, but I'm still scarred by that. I'm still, it's still all up here because I can still hear those words echoing around my head. They are still there and that is not worth it. Having the nightmares sometimes is not worth it. Reliving the events sometimes is not worth it. You might be a better person and a stronger person overall afterwards. But don't ever, ever leave it too far and too long. And don't you ever think about committing suicide. It's not worth it. Because all you're doing, if you do go down that suicide route, you're just putting the pain and the suffering on other people. And it isn't worth it. It's not worth it in the end. I've been there. I've been down to the depths of hell and I've come back. I've been there multiple times.
because I've lost family members and I've lost close friends. You know, I've been to the pits of hell and come back. I'm still broken. Oh God, I'm still broken. But, you know, it's just, it, it, in the end, yes, it does make us better. It does make us a better person. It does help us become stronger. But living through it, when you have to deal with that, and especially with someone who, to be honest, if you were the one that got peed off and you were the one that did what they do, you probably could have killed them. Because if it was me doing that to them, I could easily have broke their arm. I could easily have broke their leg. I could easily have broke their neck. I could easily have leant too hard and suffocated them. Because I was... A heavier and stronger person than they was. I knew all of the weak spots on that person's body so I could easily have picked them apart but I didn't. All of my fight back was all self-defense, all just pushing away, all of just batting the arm away, batting, you know, locking my legs in a certain way so that they couldn't get to my groin. You know, it's all self defense and putting barriers up effectively to stop them doing that but you know really I don't know how to end this really I don't know how to end this you know I will never name them and I will never I would never want any harm on them or for them but their doing is their doing. They brought upon themselves their own downfall and their own suffering because of what they did and how they treated people. Their attitude towards others. You know, how they treat people and what they do to other people. They brought their own suffering upon themselves by doing what they did to other people because a few other people have fought back against them in the past. But in the past time, their own personal and social downfalls happened because of that narcissistic, selfish bias of themselves over other people. They have lost more than they gained by doing what they did, but, you know. You know, I've been places now that I would never have been with that person. I've seen things I would never have seen with that person. I've had opportunities to take jobs I would never have been able to take whilst I was where I was. You know, things in life have changed for me a lot for the better. You know, I've had other jobs that have given me more opportunity. I'm now a lot more open and a lot more kind of not quite as argumentative as I was at that point. But the job I had at the time was very stressful. I was dealing with people who are of the unsavoury nature. And I was also going through all of that abuse at the same time. And then dealing with other family members in the background who were also trying to find a way to bring me down. Because of a, a life choice. You know. And because of what else is behind me and all this stuff. You know, because I've chosen to do certain things, I've been through abuse. I've been through abuse from partners as I just went covered. I've also been through abuse from family members by an auntie of mine who still spits venom to this day. Has done everything possible. You know, an auntie who allowed a paedophile into her own household to date her youngest daughter. An auntie who allowed a rapist to impregnate her daughter. An auntie who does not give two flying fucks about anybody else apart from enforcing the you must have kids stereotype on her kids. You know, there are other family members out there who literally follow the word of God only to what they want but yet will preach to other people about other things, but their own lifestyle choices of where they 
drink, they smoke, they do drugs, they do all sorts of other stuff, you know. So if they were so on the letter of God, they would not be doing half of what they do. But this is the problem with people within this world. They will always do that because they feel that they are better than other people when they're not. We are all the same. We are all the same meat bags. But again, that's just their attitude and that's what they feel and what they believe. You know, because of when I came out, when I turned around and said, uh, I think I might be gay or whatever and I've got a boyfriend. Just years and years and years ago. A family member advised my father to take me to go visit a doctor somewhere else, you know, at a clinic. Now, I went to this visit and it was EST, electroshock therapy. I stood up from my chair, I pushed the doctor away and I walked out of the door and I was restrained and put in a chair and told that this is best for me. I kicked off and I kicked off and I kicked off. I just every time they came towards me with something, I would just throw my arms and lash because it was the only way I could get them out of my face. Because I knew what they were going to do. They wanted to use EST to try to convert me and straighten me out. By the way, this doctor is still, well, the doctor's practice is still there, but that doctor is now not, no longer there. That doctor has gone somewhere else, somewhere where they can easily do electroshock therapy or electroconvulsive therapy or whatever you want to call it. You know, I have lived this all. I have been through it all. I have been abused by family members and by partners and by other people and by friends. You know, I have gone through so much and come through the other side. But I don't ever want anyone else to live this or to see what I have seen and go through what I have gone through. I made life choices with people and with partners that have changed my life and have changed me as a person. I've made choices that I would never want anyone else to ever have to make. I made decisions which are incredibly life-changing. You know, I have been asked by family members or by partners, family members, would I be the one to effectively be the last person in the room with someone who is dying? You know... I've done that. I've, sw I've effectively switched off the machine. I have done that. And I never want to do that again because it is harrowing. It hurts. I might not have known that person personally or for very long, but it hurts. It hurts like hell having to do that and to know that the family members chose an outsider to do it. Outsider. Because I'm cold and calculating and because I can stand there and go, yes, no. And because I can switch off and do that. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> I don't think I could ever do that again. Same with, you know, having the choice of do you be selfish and keep a fetus alive, but in the end it would kill your partner because of an illness and an autoimmune disease that they have or do you do what is even harder and say abort the fetus and save her life do you do that do you sit there with a friend or family member and shout at them until you're blue in the face Go get help. Go talk to a doctor. Go do this. You know, do you literally pick that person up 
and walks them to the hospital? Do you go and do things, you know, practically forcing someone to go get help because you know it is better for them to go get help than it is for them to just sit there and just vegetate and go and die? Do you do that? Because I know there's people out there that would fade away from doing that. They would just walk away from it. They wouldn't have the strength to effectively force someone to do that. Because you know it is for the best. And because it is what they should be able to do. But, you know. I haven't got a clue how I'm going to end this. All, is, all I know is that it's been half an hour of me going through and living through pain that I don't want anyone else to ever go through and giving bits there. The only advice I can say is if you feel like you are in one of these ruts and that this is happening to you or that you know someone that this is happening to you or you feel that this is happening to you, go talk. Go talk to a, a counsellor. Talk to a family member. Talk to that friend. Talk to someone. If you are living through some of the some of the pain and then some of the abuse, get out or go find some way of ending this without going drastic. Because going drastic is not good. You know. You can get out of you can get out of those relationships. You really can. You can walk away from family members. Trust me, you can walk away from family members. You can move miles away. You know, if you have a skill set that does some that speaks a lot, you can go to other countries. You can go to other countries in the Commonwealth. You can go to Canada. You can go to Australia. You can go to New Zealand. You can do more with your life than you ever realise. You can do a lot, lot more and a lot, lot better. The pain will stay, but it will fade and it will dull. Life will get better and you will be able to blossom as a better person further down the line when you are away from the hell and the pain and the suffering and the abuse. Yes, I'm still broken. I'm still deaf. I'm still partially going blind because I have to have glasses. You know, I'm still suffering ill effects of my own illnesses. That will never change. But life will always get better and the sun will always rise. You don't have to live with the abuse. You don't have to live with the narcissistic, asinine people. You can block those people out of your life and you can move on. I've done it. Countless others have done it. <laughs> Don't suffer in silence. Go get your help. If you need to and you feel like it, take some time out. If you have the money to do it and you need some, somewhere quiet and private, then find a hotel. Find a hotel somewhere that you like to go. You know, Book yourself a hotel for a night or two. Have some time away from it. Have some time away from that partner, from that fam those family members. You know, even if it means that you pack yourself, you know, a couple of days worth of clothes and you go visit a family member at the far side of the country for a while. Go do it. Go do it because that time away and that break will give you the better that it will give you the better chance to see where things are going and how to do this. Because you will not be alone. You don't need to be alone. So on that note, before I burst into tears again, I will bid thee farewell. <laughs>